has good technique, he will be elite. If his technique becomes great, not just good, then he's a Hall of Famer. Fighting through contact, fighting through the offensive line, beating the double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, we're talking football, not storylines. And you are listening to another edition, the 60th edition. I think this will be the last time I say the edition, what it is. Who cares at this point? Welcome to another edition of Blue Splits. Um, we're going to be doing the second half of the Carl Lawson review, about 30-ish plays. Um, we'll hit on a couple of the signings they made really, really quickly before I even get into that. Um, but we'll be relatively quick. And then after that, um, I'm hoping this comes up on Thursday night on uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday area, we'll have the uh, Corey Davis review out uh, with Marcus Coleman. And then shortly after that, I'll do Gerard Davis, uh, Sheldon Rankins, uh, Keelan Cole, and maybe I'll try to get out one more before the draft. And then after the draft, we're going to hit the first couple of draft picks hard. And then we'll have some votes, whether you guys rather have the fourth round pick that the Jets uh picked up or would you rather have Joyner or Vinnie Curry or, Ke- or Kevin Coleman, those guys. So then we'll start having votes, but I'm going to try to get at least the, uh, the first or the biggest five guys of the Jets sign um, out. And obviously they could still sign some guys who might place above, you know, one Sheldon Rankins or uh, Keelan Cole, but we'll see what happens. Um, just going over the, the signings that they made quickly. Um, so I do want to get to the film of, uh, of Carl Lawson. They signed Te- uh, Tevin Coleman, I'm okay with it. Um, If you saw my list I put out the other day on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter, JoeRB31, I said I wanted them to sign a depth running back. uh, And I listed Duke Johnson, Jared McKinnon, and Tevin Coleman. And they signed Coleman. I'm cool with it. He obviously played with Shanahan uh, with the Falcons. He played um, under Shanahan with the 49ers. Is a career, a little bit over four yards per carry guy. Last year, he struggled with injuries, struggled with his yards per carry. But you'd think he bounced back to form. One of the better uh, receiving backs in the NFL. So for... $2 $2 million max. You pair him up with uh, Ty Johnson, Josh Adams, and P. Ryan. It gives them flexibility in the draft where they don't absolutely need to hit a running back. But at the same time, if they see a guy, you know, a gain well on the third or fourth off the top of my head, who they really like, then sure, grab him and cut one of those guys. But if not, it's it's a good enough running back group that they can move forward. Um, is it elite? No. Is it good? Probably not. But with this, uh, with this system and with the coaching staff's beliefs uh, in the Shanahan system over the years that running back is not a very important position, which I tend to agree with. Um, it's okay for now. Running back's that position that, let's say the Jets are competing for a Super Bowl in a couple of years. Do they sign an Aaron Jones or, you know, w- one of those guys? Draft the running back. Uh, like you need in, you know, in the second round or Najah Harris in the second round or, you know, Williams or one of these guys? Yeah, sure. But right now, running back is the least uh, of concern for the Jets. They like the Coleman signing. And then the fifth spot on my list, I, I listed five or six positions I really wanted the Jets to hit. Uh, tight end could be one, too, if you really wanted to. But they signed Croft, so I don't think that's going to happen. I think that will be addressed in the future. Uh, but the fifth position I, I, address, I uh, listed was uh, DNs. And I listed Kerry Hyder, Clowney, Olivier Vernon, uh, Everson Griffin and Curry. They signed Vinnie Curry. Uh, really, really like that signing. Again, uh, people were complaining, oh, he's old, all this stuff. Just go look at his percent uh, His percent of plays uh, played versus how much pressure and QB hits he got. He's like, I, I think Nani put it out the other day, like 94th and 95th percentiles uh, of defensive ends in terms of pressure uh, per snap. So he still gets a lot of pressure per snap. Um, and what it allows you to do is instead of just having Rankins, Quinn and Williams, um, Lawson and, and John Franklin Myers being your only like true rush guys. Like you have some backups. Yeah. You have Zuniga, you have Huff, um, you know, you, you have Shepard, but those are the only four consistent guys or those are the only guys you feel can get consistent pressure. Now adding a fifth guy to that four man group really allows you to rotate. You know, he can come into the edge or he can come on the edge. John Franklin Myers can kick in or Lawson can kick in. Lawson has rushed from three tech before uh, John Franklin Myers has rushed all up and down the line. So now, you know, you, you, let's say you spell, uh, you know, Quinn, Quinn Williams needs a break for a snap. Okay, well now uh, Vinny Curry takes over at five tech, John Franklin Myers kicks into three, and now uh, you have Rankins at one or vice versa. You know, maybe Rankins needs a break, Quinn Williams kicks into one, JFM at, at, at three, 
and then you have Curry at the at the edge. You know, there's so many different things they can play around with now. Obviously, you don't want Lawson and Curry really rushing from the inside, but it allows them to use the flexibility of Drive Frank and Myers to kick him inside as well. So it's really, really cool. Um, and Curry could I think he he he's rushed a little bit at three technique. Uh, I'll definitely watch his film, but I would say primarily you want him on the edge. So um rusted rusher uh rusted rested rushers, I say are the best rushers. Uh geez, that's a that's a tongue twister. But uh it's true because that that position, I feel like more than any other position in the NFL, um, you need to go balls to the wall on pretty much every single snap, whether you're rushing the passer or um you know, trying to uh, stop the run. You have combos coming at you. You're trying to sort out a bunch of traffic. You don't really know what's going on. Um, where corners, okay, it's a run play. Yeah, you can load for a little bit. Receivers, you can load for a little bit. Safeties might be a quick run. You might be able, you might be able to load for a little bit. Same thing with linebackers. The run goes away from it. There's times where other positions can loaf it. Um, but I feel like defensive line is the most taxing position in terms of your your physical, like your physical. Uh, you really need to have uh, backups who can spell guys. That's why you don't really see guys play 100% of the snaps. So the highest you really see is like 90 because guys just, you absolutely need breaks. It's, it's almost impossible. But um, going to the rest of the guys and some of the positions I want to hit um, before I get into the film, the other the other things I listed, and those were the fifth and sixth, by the way, that they got. So I, I still have one through four I want to get. And obviously tight end. Yeah, I wanted to address it more. I, I wanted the John New Smith. I, I wanted um, the... Uh, uh, what the hell is the guy's name from the uh, Everett? I wanted Everett. I wanted a couple of those guys. Obviously, didn't sign them. It is what it is. Um, but Croft is a is a really good in line blocker when he's healthy. So that's that's really important for the system. So that's, that's a good signing. It's not people aren't going to see his blocking tight end and say, "Oh my god, that's great." But listen, if they're running a lot of outside zone, inside zone, they want blockers on the field with whether it be 21, 12 personnel, whatever they're running. And you have a guy um, in Croft and you have a guy in Wesco. A lot of people talk about Wesco. Oh, he's in danger. I don't think so. Uh, it allows you the flexibility to play Wesco or Croft at H back, uh, fullback. And with another one of those guys, whoever it might be, who's not in the backfield on the line. Um, so is it going to be a uh, signing that typed up? No, but for the importance of this offense, it actually means something. So that wasn't a bad signing either. Obviously in the future, yeah, do I want you know a better tight end all around uh, tight end who, you know, um, like a Kittle. Yeah, for sure. Who doesn't, but, uh, hopefully Herman takes steps up. He's a decent blocker. Um, but we'll see, uh, other than that, the, the one through four that I had uh cornerback outside corner, I think is absolutely a necessity right now. They need at least one corner. If they sign one of these guys, I, <clears throat> I feel like they don't sign a cor- uh, a slot corner. They would have the flexi or they would probably play a lot of big nickel, which basically just means nickel with, with three safeties instead of three corners. So you'd have, uh, Ashton Davis, Joyner and may on the field a lot. Ideally, you sign two, but some of the outside corners I was looking at, uh, Steven Nelson, who's got re- uh, released from the uh, Steelers. Is he a fit? You know, um, I know he played a lot, a lot of man. He's not the size that Salah typically wants at corner, but um, I still think he'd be pretty effective with the Jets. Uh, Malcolm Butler, who just got signed to the Cardinals. Sherman, who I don't really think is going to come here because he wants to play for a winning team and wants to stay on the West Coast, apparently. I, I, just, I just don't really see it. Um, the other guys I could see is Nelson. Uh, Razul Douglas, who Joe Douglas was with a little bit, I think when the Eagles drafted him, so maybe Razul Douglas. He had a good year with the uh, with the Panthers last year. Um, again, these aren't barn burners, but they're better than Bless Austin. So Nelson Douglas and uh, Dark West Denard, who's like 28 years old, I believe, who's relatively effective um, with the uh, Bengals. I think last year he might have switched teams. Um, I forget, but those are some of the, the guys I want. Nelson Douglas Denard, just something other than Bless Austin. And then slot corner, Quan Williams signed back with the uh, 49ers after uh, visiting with the Chiefs. Um, and the Jets really need a slot. Uh, it needs to be Brian Poole, uh, unless they're going to put a lot of faith in a couple of good games from an undrafted free agent in, in Javelin Gidry. Uh, will they do that? I'm not sure. Would I prefer it? No. Uh, if, if it happens again, you see how Gidry does. If he doesn't perform well, you run a lot of big nickel. Again, not ideal, but you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. The, the Jets were a two and fourteen team last year. Um, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs this year, but I, I do think they're definitely are improving the team. And some of these positions, you know, corner and tight end and offensive line are going to continue to be addressed. You can't fill all the holes. Um, the third thing I was I, I wanted to see, uh, who there's not there's not really a lot of options out there. Um, Offensive guards, obviously, it's like my number one priority, but in terms of the guys who are out there, it's my number three on the list. Uh, Lane Taylor, a guy who battled some injuries with the Packers in the last couple of years, but still when he plays, is pretty good. Maybe you bring him, him in for an incentive-based contract. 
Uh, Quentin Spain, I believe he's not signed yet. Another uh, okay guard uh, or a try turner who is a pro bowl level guard the last couple of years. Uh, last year he struggled, I think, with some injuries and just overall. Uh, but maybe you bring him in and then you draft the guy early and then you have, you have Turner, hopefully a rookie <clears throat> at 23 or 34, Greg Van Roden, you cut Lewis and you have Clark. So you have like four guys competing for uh, four or five guys competing for two spots. So you bring in some competition, you bring in some depth. So I want to see one of those guys brought in. The last thing I want to see brought in is uh it's a linebacker. Um, this this system, I, I've said it in the past, has a lot of emphasis on coverage linebackers. The linebackers can move. Right now, they have Cashman, who's consistently hurt. You have um, Draw Davis. And then you have uh, uh, Mosley. Mosley hasn't played in two years. Draw Davis has been up and down. He uh, Last year was an up, so we continue, hopefully they continue to use that up. Like I said, don't make him think. Just make him attack holes, take on blockers, uh, playing, you know, some simpler coverage roles. And I think he'll be pretty good, but so let's say you even have just Mosley and Davis, who are your backups? Who is your starter? Who is your will? Uh, the will you, right now is penciled in at, at Cashman, but Cashman hasn't stayed healthy for, for over half the season since he's been drafted. I don't believe uh, last year, he barely played at all. So they need a linebacker badly, in my opinion, like not only as a backup, but as a starter, they need a starting will backer. Uh, some of the guys you're looking at, uh, Quan Alexander, depending on his health, I think he tore his AC or his, his uh, Achilles in like December last year. So how healthy is he? How healthy is he? Can he be ready to, to start the season? Uh, I'm not sure, but that's a guy to look into. Uh, I think uh, a guy who makes sense, who's a who's a veteran, uh, KJ Wright, who's still pretty effective last year for the Seahawks, who, who could be that will backer. Uh, Alex Anzalone, to be honest, I'm not sure how how well he fits as a will. Um, that's a guy I would look into. So I really, like I said, I really feel like they need to, to, to sign a corner, a slot corner, an offensive guard and a linebacker. Um, will they get all those guys? No, but I, I think, I think corner two of the four are absolutely ne- a necessity, uh, a corner and a slot corner or a corner and a linebacker. It allows you some flexibility in the draft where you can go into the draft, really only needing that new quarterback at two. Um, I will stand by that. And then you need a guard, whether it be at, at 23, 34. And then as, as the draft falls, do you find a slot corner? Um, you might, you might not. And then you have to play Joyner in more of a full-time role and Davis in more of a full-time role. Again, you might struggle there a little bit, but as long as it's addressed somewhat where you don't have a bless Austin, where you're not relying on guys like bless Austin and Blake Cashman. Um, I just feel it's an absolute necessity. So getting into the, um, Oh, that's what we have to do too. Uh, the Carl Lawson France and weaknesses. I didn't, I said, I didn't do that last week on purpose to make you guys come back. Um, some of his primary moves we've already seen kind of long arm stab. Uh, chop, cross, chop, hump, move, uh, bull, spin, rip, um, which is a, a, a wide uh, variety of moves. He uses those you know, quite frequently, so it's not like he only uses those uh, every once in a while, so that's good to see. Um, in terms of his strengths, uh, maybe I could have wrote down a little bit more. Um, I did these, I'm trying to do these relatively quickly. Again, moving into the new house and stuff. Uh, I don't have as much time as I did last year, so I'm really trying to get these out. Uh, not saying they're not quality, um, but these are the ones I listed. Uh, Power, compact frame, good technique, uh, moves and counter moves, speed off the line, snap timing, physical, uh, motor, plays with good pad level uh, level or leverage, uh, links hands and feet, strike timing, controls hands, uh, quick to reset counter, uh, thick, uh, thick base, variety of rush moves, as I just said, strength on contact, power, big hitter. I said power twice. Again, I didn't really go through this twice. Uh, big hitter. Hand placement on uh, and angles, core power, works hands, power through contact. I might have said that again twice. Uh, aware of quarterback's drop points. Good job maintaining contact with inside arm on outside rushes. Uh, burst load off of first step. Torque. Um, ability to quickly plant and flatten. Uh, athleticism getting into shallow zones. Uh, bend flexibility, ankle flexibility. Uh, the weaknesses I have, um, and this isn't necessarily a huge weakness, but I would say it's average compared to his really good rushing ability. Um, he's average in the run game because of his arm length and his size. Um, lateral agility is okay. Short arms. Uh, I want to see him be more forceful when setting the edge. want to see his game in a more full-time role, which we saw a little bit more towards the end. Um, can lean on hands a little bit too early into reps, which if you see a guy trap him, um, he might fall to the turf. Uh, want to see him defeat hands earlier into it. Uh, it, early in reps at times, um, gets too far upfield on run plays. His tackle radius is short. His accuracy um, on chops uh, could set angles for himself even better. 
uh, which I don't actually, I should probably actually take that out because I don't actually agree with that reading that a second time. Don't erase that from your memory. Uh, more patient with chop hands. I agree with that. And chop hand needs to come higher, aim for the elbow. We talked about that while we're doing the film. Um, and then there's some other notes. Obviously, he could rush from inside and out, which gives him that flexibility, which I already spoke about. Um, but let's get into some of the other film. I'm excited to get into Corey Davis, too. Um, interesting guy. Uh, some of the games that he wasn't targeted, I don't necessarily think it was his fault. I also think that Tannehill missed him a few times, which we'll speak. I, I don't know if I recorded any of those plays. Maybe I did. Uh, Tannehill's still not very good. I, I, I will not. There's some quarterbacks I will not back down from. Like Tannehill, I don't think he's very good. Kirk Cousins, Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't think I'm lighting the world on fire with these guys. Lamar Jackson. Uh, there's some guys I don't really like that 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 like that that much. Lamar Jackson is better than those guys. I said, but um, there's definitely guys who are hyped up a little bit too much in my in my opinion. Uh, Tannehill definitely being one of them. So we have 33 plays left, I believe. Um, so let's get into it. Let me organize my screens here. I think the I think the Corey Davis reviews me about 50 plays. Uh, this one is about uh, 73, 74. So I think it's gonna be a little bit shorter. What I'll most likely do is maybe I'll do 25 plays with Marcus, and then right after uh, that, a couple days later, I'll I'll release the second half of it. So, um, okay, let's go here. Uh, right side of the screen again, his primary spot's going to be that, is it going to be that right end or rushing the left tackle? Uh, he can kick in a three tech. I've seen him do it a couple times. He can play the, the, uh, the left end spot as well, rushing against the right tackle. Um, again, with the Jets flexibility in the line, maybe he moves around a little bit more, but primarily um, his effectiveness has been from the, uh, right defensive end spot. So, again, another good player. The quarterback just got rid of the ball quickly. Um, you have the left tackle who, who more or less almost like it, it, it's it's like a 45 degree set. Uh, it's almost like a people call it a, a, a kick jump where you where you go to like in your kick slide and you actually jump a guy. It's a mixture of both. Um, it's it's more of a four. I would say it's more of a of a short fight, 45 degree set where he just gets aggressive when, when Lawson um, gets into his, uh, into the, that contact window. Uh, Lawson at first is reading the backfield. He obviously sees that the, uh, it's just a, it's, it's not a run play. Um, it's just a running back crossing his face. Again, prepares for the hands, widens, as we always say, good job getting the left hand on. Um, first, he's really good strike time with that left hand. It's, it's definitely impressive. It's something that consistently shows throughout his film. Chops the outside outside arm. He gets widened a little bit, um, just based on him actually pushing off with his left hand is why he widens to get himself away from the hands. Chops the outside arm, and then you're going to see him burst up the arc. Looks like he chops the outside arm again. Yeah, chops the outside arm again right there. Rip tight corner right there. Corners tightly. Big hit on Alex Smith. So again, if you watch this, okay, he gets there in like, what? The staff starts at, at about one second. Gets there in about, he gets there in three seconds. So he gets there pretty much as quickly as you can. Maybe a little bit of a delay because he had a wide and stuff like that, but he, he beat that tackle really quickly. Again, kills him and it's a touchdown. So Good play again, all good plays, all good processes don't result in good plays um, for the team. But you have corners, and, and this is what I've talked about a little bit with the corners. Corners are such a need because, um, obviously, guard I, I want the guard just because of whoever the quarterback is, I want them to protect it. And last year, the offensive line or in 2019 went from absolutely dreadful, one of the worst in the league, to, to still bad to below average, but still much better than absolutely horrific. Um, but with the Jets investing so much in their uh, defensive front. I don't want to invest that much in the defensive front and then limit the effectiveness of that defensive front because there's no corners because of how, no matter how good these guys are and there's, there's arguments in both ways. You can look at it. Oh, well they have a better defensive front. So the cover, the corners only to cover as long hundred percent makes sense. But the other side of that argument is if you invest a lot in the defensive front, you don't want to take away their effectiveness because the ball is getting out so quick and it's, you don't need, you don't need you know, Revis and prime Sherman, you need guys who can cover for three seconds. As you saw on that, on that play right there, three, four seconds can bless. Am I confident in bless Austin covering 
consistently for three seconds. I am not because I, he gets beat on on a, a two step hitch or a smoke route. Like I, he, he's not good. So they need somebody who can just hold the fort for this year. Um, you know, even like a Morris Claiborne from 2017, he was bad, but he wasn't that bad. Um, you know, like I said, Darquise Denard, a Razul Douglas, um, any one of these guys would be much better than Bless Austin. Bless Austin, not to keep shitting on the guy, but I feel like on a, a team with good corner depth, um, all things being uh, all things being equal, he might not make a team. And I, I really do think he's that bad. Um, now, would I bank on him not making a team? No, but would he be the five or six corner? I, I yes. You know, do I am I even comfortable with him as a number four? I'm not. You know, I want him on the back end of the roster competing for jobs with guys like Lamar Jackson and Arthur Marlett, not not as the penciled in starter for the Jets right now. So they need to do something. They absolutely do. Um, Lawson Bull Jerk, again, left side of your screen, the right defensive end. Again, just this is power. Um, he is a he is a monster. Again, the rushes up to the arc, the the tackle gets out on him, so he knows he's not going to be able to beat him up at the arc, especially with the shorter drop. And what does he do? Same thing he does a lot of the times. Plant off the inside of the outside of the outside foot, burst through. And the funny thing is, too, he actually gets caught right here. Uh, not the best placement right here from the tackle um, with both hands on the shoulder pad, but he still gets caught right here, but he shows the power. As he as he drops his hips, as always, generates the power off of, off of the inside of the back foot that just rotated, allowing his hips to come through. Um, his hips come through, and just he just ducks his head into the sky. Gets his eventually gets his hands on the chest, bull, jerk arm over, and gets to Jones. But Jones gets rid of the ball in 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 two in three seconds here again. But he's there. Just look at the just look at the power this guy has. This is with him not even winning hand placement. You know, so it is what it is at time with him not getting sacks. I need to re redo these things. Okay. All right. Um next play. Lawson win leverage. Pull through. Okay. This is why I want to see more of a little run game. I said he's not he's not necessarily always aggressive, setting the edge, um, bringing power into that contact. He's a little bit more passive with his contact as he reads. You can tell he's he's thinking a little bit too much. Um, but here I like I like the aggressiveness. Um, obviously he sees the left the left tackle is working to to kick him out, um, to seal him outside, and Lawson leverage. He's nice and he's he's in line right here. Nice job. You want to, you basically want to have the 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 shins be equal with your upper body, and your thighs working at the complete opposite way uh, angle to to act as a shock absorber. He's he's leaving a little bit hard right here, but he's also expecting that contact. But his his heels up through his up through his chest is pretty much a straight line right here. So. Um, that's 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 what we want to see in terms of talking about guys being linear. Um, get his gets his hands on, pops them, pull through, find the running back, tackle, uh, run stuff on the on the goal line. I want to see that more consistently though. It's just it's not overly consistent with that or with that for him. Um, which again, if you're getting a decent run stuffer and an elite pass rusher, fine with me. <laughs> So, uh, double chop, double chops, rip left end or sorry, right end, left side of your screen. Good burst. Again, we see the good burst shows up. Strike timing is good. Chops both hands. Yeah. That's what that's, is that what I'm, well, it doesn't really, that inside arm might not be chopping. Might just be throwing it down for momentum, but either way, chops the outside arm. Chop the outside arm, weaken it, rip through, bend. Again, another rep. How quick is the ball out? Snap, out. But look how quick he wins. Again, again, 
if this guy was covered, you know, simple hitch snag route from 15 from Golden Tate, and the ball is out. One, two, three, hitch, throw. It's almost impossible to get there, but process. He wins. Chop, rip, Ben got there. Technique, feel, pass. Okay. Yeah, Jones, who just stepped up again. So he's wadding a little bit. He's trying to read if it's going to be a run play. Um, he feels that it's not going to be a run play. Again, more of a direct angle to the tackle as he gets in that contact window, when he frequently does, hops and elongates to the outside to um, avoid the hands and both make the hands uh, overextended, which makes it easier for you to chop them. Left hand on, chop the outside. Bends as he crosses the hip. Continues to cross the hip and allowing himself to cross those hips by throwing that rip. Nice high and tight. I want that high and tight rip. You can see it's high and tight. Which again, weakens that 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 uh, containment punch, that elbow um, from the tackle where he looks like he's trying to wrench him right here. Bend, Jones steps up. So again, if Jones couldn't step up because uh, I have some bad news for offenses, this is not going to look like what, what Sheldon what Sheldon Rankins and Quinton Williams and John Franklin Myers are going to look like often. Uh, that's the one area I have a lot of confidence in is our and Rankins being the most questionable um, because um, of his Achilles and his and his uh, you know leg injuries in the last couple of years. But even if he could be just what he was in 2018 or a little bit lesser, um, he's a he'll still be a very very effective rusher. Um, this is not going to happen very often with these guys being so far. So he'll step up into those guys is what it is. But again, you have Jones who just takes his hitch um, and continues to climb that pocket and get rid of the ball. So, but it's a win for him. Uh, I, that's, that's a win in my book. Is it as pretty as a win ever? And, you know, did he get the sack? No, but positive or negative play? Definitely positive. I don't know. I keep the moving the screen down. I don't know, I don't know when I, when I do that, if it like, I, I think it takes away the image of the screen and shows me again, but it's not letting me see the uh, where I labeled the play on my screen um, initially. So that's why I keep having to do that. But right end, left side of your screen. Or sorry, right end, right side of your screen. It's better from this view for you guys. Very similar. The ball is out. How quick there? Pretty much identical to a lot of the other, the other reps. It's like a double chop on that, that outside arm. It's actually more like... You have, again, more of a direct angle as he feels that, that punch coming. And look what him widening does. You see that, what that does to the tackle? How now he's reaching for that contact because he thought uh, Lawson was going to be in a spot that he was not, obviously. Cross chop. goes a, He's pretty safe with this right here. He goes almost double chop it or like a chop swipe to the outside arm, whatever you want to call it. Throws this arm out to protect himself. The left arm. Um, Ben's the edge. So I'm checking. I, I got to check my Twitter a little bit too, just to see if the Jets do sign anybody. I, I just really want a damn corner. Um, Ben's, and again, is right. And again, this is that. This is the power. This is the power through that bend again. When you when you have 300 plus pound tackles pushing you like this, it really does not affect Lawson much. Like he he is really good at staying going on the safe flat. The guys are pushing him, but Daniel Jones, look how quick the ball is out. One, two, not even one, one step drop, one throw. How are you supposed to get there? Next rep. This is back to back. Very similar. Tighter angle outside. Chop the outside arm. He misses a little bit. Good job by the tackle, not, not staying on that reach. So he starts to reach and he pulls his hands away. So good job by him. They re-engage. Left hand wins inside. Again. With good bend, they both have good bend right here, but Lawson's able to chop the outside of him again. Continue to work those hands. Then he throws a rip, but he has to step up in the pocket. So, good job. Chop, re-engage, stab, chop, rip. Like he's just continually working his hands, it's nice. Uh, 
Let's see if it worked this time. I try to I try to drag that one window down. Oops. Screen share, share. Some of it. Okay, power. Left side of your screen, right end. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's just fun. That's all that's all that was. Oh, did I record that too long? Yeah, I did. I guess I never cut it. Yep, never cut it. Okay. So this is just fun in terms of power. Inside angle, stab, chop, really, really similar. But when he lands at left hand, he continues to obviously grab him, as you can see. And uh, he just pulls him through. That's all that is. Pulls him through, assists with that right hand a little bit with that club. But I just think it's funny when you see – this is like a picture I should post, what, what, what he does to rushers or what he does to tackles. But, yeah, that's just, that's just fun. The, the tackle actually getting that extension on him and pushing him outside actually aided him in throwing him by. Obviously, because he's throwing momentum. It's funny. And I never cut it. So that's all that extra time is. Moving on. Play 48. Quick win bailout. All right. Right end. Takes the open chest. See, this is the problem with Lawson. Like, it's he has such a fun ability to really screw with tackles heads because if he keeps rushing outside outside or that inside out inside out with that with that stab cross chop then guys are going to start really rushing to get outside on him and kind of cut him off and now he's going to start to bully you or spin you inside i want to see him use some more um inside rips as well um but he has the ability to win inside out so when guys start getting outside i'm getting outside i'm getting outside i'm panicking with their feet uh get the bulls coming so so it happens a little bit here. You can see the tackle really laboring to get outside. Not the best feet from the tackle. You see they're really like slamming those, those feet. They're not really smooth. But um, sees that open chest, lowers, both hands inside, helmet into the chin, good leverage, and he's – okay, so that's what he does. Bull, another bull jerk. Bull, jerk, and gets there. But again – Bull, jerk, balls out. See what I'm saying about the process? I think you do. Um, I don't know if I'm going to come to the last YouTube thing. I haven't, I haven't watched in a while. I uh, watched it in a little bit. Or people are watching the website. You can always email me too. I, never, I don't really ever say that, but uh, Joe period blew it at um, Jets with an S xfactor.com um i hate these calls you ever get these like stupid mark just and <laughs> freaking st especially when you get a house and you start talking to like gas and electric and and water and this and that you get so many freaking unknown calls i would ignore them it's important enough to leave me a message that's my motto uh quick one in the run game right edge left side of your screen that's just aggressiveness. This is what I want to see from him. Just, just aggressive as hell instead of being a little bit more patient. And that, and that's the benefit too of the more of the of the of the four down even fronts one gapping, uh, you know, defensive fronts is you're responsible for the edge. You know, fifty nine may be responsible for the for the for the B. He might be for the A. He might be two gapping. He might be two gapping. Whatever it is. But with the, I'm not saying this front, just in specifically, because could, you could do hybrid fronts too, where you have certain guys two gapping, which they'll probably do a lot. Like when 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 Fado Kasi comes in, put him at the one and let him take responsibility of the of the a gaps, and then you have guys like like Q Mosley fill a B, and then you have Lawson and and uh, JFM uh, fill the C's. Um, so, but in general, it allows guys like Lawson and things like that to be a little bit more aggressive, which the guys in the defensive front that the Jets have need to be more aggressive. Like the guys like Shepard, Fadokasi can, can, can run stuff to gap when they come in. But here, again, snap timing is really good. Into the backfield in a hurry. Inside zone split. He beats the tackle. 
who cheats inside a little bit. Looks like he obviously the tackle wasn't expecting, um, or he was reading the linebacker first. If the if the linebacker uh, shot the B gap, he's going to pick him up. So he reads the linebacker, didn't expect the ball, going to get so uh, be so quick off the snap. Also, again, good job of lessening his body right here. Lessens, dips the shoulder, R high and tight rip. Reads the mesh point, bends, makes a tackle on 37, which is Gaskin, I think. I think it's Gaskin. All right, 50. I forgot what it was. Burst bend. Okay. Oh, now look at this. Holy shit. He's the left end on the left side of your screen. What's going on here? Again, that burst. Like just, just I'm going to play that a couple of times. Just, that, just note the burst. And again, you have to watch this in context. He's 265, not 230, 240. Burst is great. That first step is good. He puts a lot of load up on that front leg. I'd like NASCAR four-point stance. A lot of bursts off that back foot, powering the legs. Starts to flatten. Chops the uh, the uh, chop swipe, whatever you want to call it, with that left arm. Bend. Pretty damn good. Or pretty good. It's not elite, but it's good. Rip high and tight. Gets the quarterback. But again, Another rep where the ball is out in under three seconds. Probably not even. No, this ball is out and he, he gets rid of it before the one. Probably like one and a half or one and a half right there. They don't snap it until about one second. The ball is out in about 1.5 seconds right here. Snap, throw. Maybe a little bit over, but that's a quick win for Lawson and he's there. Ball's out. <laughs> Uh, loss and long arm. We're back to the right defensive end, the right side of your screen. Again, he has the ability to, like, with that arm, he's a really good job of like, feeling it out. Where, like, if guys' chests are going to be, if, if they're going to reach a little bit more and he's going to long arm you, then he can, that, you know, you pull you back, take the edge. But if guys are going to, to open up their, their feet, and open up their hips a little bit more to the sideline, then he places the hand more inside. It just lands where it's going to land. Um, and if it's more inside here, then he has a tendency to, to throw that hump move where he's basically just throwing them by, by him um, in that chest or armpit area and then rush the, the B-gap. So that's what happens here. His hand lands more onto the shoulder pad, um, which at this point, again, his hand is gener generating momentum where this tackle will be going backwards to the sideline of this instead of backwards to the quarterback where he might be able to take that edge and soften that edge, if that makes sense. So a little bit of a hump. Hump is technically more of like a, a real hump move is really more of a, more of a rip. And then you go to, and then um, the guy like kind of tries to counter the rip by leaning on you and you, and you replace your arm from the rip underneath to the opposite armpit and throw him by. So that's like a technical hump move. So you get, this is almost more like a, like a push by called a hump. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, throws him by arm over gets right to the quarterback. But again, uh, 94 is pressure actually bumps him forward. So again, another really quick win for Lawson. Uh, again, that burst off the line right there is, is really good or solid. Yeah. Good burst off the line right to the quarterback, but um, what happens is what happens. Next, Lawson Bull. Right end, left side of your screen. <laughs> it's powerful. Mix between like a forty-five and a, and a and a vertical, more of a, more of a vertical set for this. Uh, it's more of a vertical, vertical set for the tackle. First up the arc. He sees the chest open. Explodes inside. Works the outside angle to inside. Lowers his head into the chin. Hands inside, and he takes him for a ride. But the ball is out, and again, 
how quick. See a lot of the themes here. He's winning a lot, and the ball is out really, really, really quick. These guys are not holding the ball. Like look, he's he's taking he's literally creating havoc. <laughs> nice, nice to see. Power hands angles. Stand up right here. Now, if Jets do go, and they, I'm sure they will run some three, four looks. Uh, he has the ability to stand up a little bit too. He he could take a shallow zone, things like that. Um, again, will that be hopefully one to two percent? Yes, but does he have the capability of doing it just for versatility's sake? Um, and can kind of throw out different looks' sake? Yes, he does. Again, a little bit longer of a win right here for him. This was not as quick as some of the other ones. Uh, the the play action, he goes to to stack the edge, and he sees that the ball is obviously it's 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 not a run play. Um, at first, it looks like a run play, but it doesn't it obviously does not turn into that. But still, good job winding. Gets his hands on, peeks into the backfield, see that it's not see that it's not a run play. Reengage. He misses with that chop again. Like I said, I want to see a little more accuracy that outside hand in general. Misses with the outside hand, but. Even with that, again, now he just turns directly to the to the to the long arm. The bull rush. So miss, but he lands it nice and low, compact, gets underneath, more of that lift force, drives the tackle back, and then is able to see that flat angle to get to, to Dalton. Arm over, works through the contact, gets to Dalton. Falls out. Right edge. Well, right defensive end, left side of your screen. Left edge of the offense. First chop rip. You see, you see how he's like always more deep into the backfield than anybody on his team? Good burst. Again, very typical move for him. Get that stab in there, chop, better timing. Coming from higher, I like that. Again, the, the lower it is, it's, if it's near your shoulder length, you don't, you're don't, you not giving yourself as much time to hit that other arm. And again, you want to really aim for the elbows. You don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be more parallel to the defender's arm or to the, off, to the offensive player's arm. You want to be uh, the opposite, not the opposite angle, but you know, almost trying to like make a cross basically with your arms. I, I can't think of the words in my head right now. Um, because obviously we're just trying to punch him at the same angle their arm is you you have you don't have so you only have so much room or so much uh, flexibility of of kind of your accuracy of your arm that makes sense you're covering more of a surface area when you're when you're when you're throwing chops and it's and it's at the opposite angle of his arm or kind of crossing his arm I should say so nice high a nice high chop right at the elbow perfect which. Screws up the tackle's momentum. Bend. Rip. Ripping high and tight. Lifts him up. Deflects the force off of his chest. Right to Dalton. Ball is out. Why did he get five and a half sacks? <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, I don't know what this one was labeled. Seven tech. Oh, yep, right here. Seven tech. Red edge, left side of your screen. That's the thing that they're gonna. I, I think you're gonna see him do a little bit more of this with the Jets. Is uh, you're gonna see him play like that, that nine tech role, uh, and you're gonna see him. Uh, you're gonna see tackles just sit down on him and try to cut him off, and he's just gonna bull rush the shit out of people. So yeah, he's going to be a five tech a lot too, but he can also fill that 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 nine tech role that they'd like to to have uh, in his defense. So he has a flexibility to do both. Again, the burst for his size is he's a freaking freight train on this play. That burst is really good. I like it. Lowers the head, forehead into the chin. 
Not easy for, for tackles to handle. Looks like the left hand lands inside. Yes, it does. And the tackle is airborne. Which he's going to hop back anyway, realistically, to anchor. But looks a little, sounds a little cooler that way. But still, that's he still sends him back a little bit farther than he probably wanted to go, obviously. Sends him back. Right hand versus left hand doesn't let him land that left hand. Good hand work. He he always is like really aware of his hands. Like I, I like the fact that he doesn't just he doesn't just get clouded uh, when he's in the middle of 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 the trench warfare. Uh, he still thinks, though, and that's that's a big part of rushers is they don't they have those primary those counter moves or they have more than primary moves. They have those counter moves, um, and him just obviously bull rushing here, and then knowing to get that hand right there to deflect that force is really good and gets him right back like again. Does it not affect the play? Look at look how uh, Dalton had to throw this ball. Does it get there? Yep. You know, but he had to float it. Like you have good secondary play right here. This is a pick, the, a PD, whatever it may be, but still an effective play from Lawson. Uh, stab, chop, rip right here. Right side of your screen. Oops. I, this is another, like, look, how, how much quicker could he win right here? Good burst. Really similar rush. We, we've seen it plenty of times now through 56 plays. More of an inside angle as he's coming to that contact window, gets the left stab in and widens to avoid the outside hand paired with a chop. That's his primary move, clearly. He sees himself being uh, with a softened edge, decides to corner on that edge. Not sure. Maybe the tackle steps on the um, foot of number 40 right here, and it makes him trip. Regardless, he was beat. The tackle was definitely beat right here. Right to Ben. But how quick out is the ball out? One, two, three, hop, throw. Loss is there and, you know, quick as hell. So. First, I think it really. I think this is a really good game for him in general. Um, left side of your screen, right defensive end, seven tech. Just a good job reading the play, penetrating, seeing that jet motion, being aware of the jet motion, the jet sweep. Is that Claypool? I think it's Claypool. Claypool. Um, attempts to to uh, change his track just to just to run past uh, Lawson, but Lawson has the burst and he also changes angles. You can see he has a more aggressive angle here. Anticipates he's going to widen. Takes more of a safe angle, drags him down in the backfield. Hell of a play. Lawson sack. Oh shit! One of the five and a half. You know he's not that good of a player. He's just as good as Jordan Jenkins. He get five and a half sacks. This looks like Jordan Jenkins, right? No offense. I, I like Jordan Jenkins, but he's not Carl Lawson. You see that load up. You see that extra little load up right there? You see that? Just that little bit. He's really loading up on those legs. He's getting ready to explode off of that. You can just see it. He coils up. Just that little bit. Right there. He's ready. He knows it's coming. Hell of a burst. Again. Tackle takes that oh shit angle. Look at his hips. Going to be hard for him to win the edge right there, right? But you got to be, you gotta, again, you have to be aware during the play, both pre post snap, what it looks like. And, 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 and post snap, this looks like the B gap is pretty damn open. Lawson sees that. Swipes the inside hand. Brings himself into the B gap. Left guard tries to drop off. Um, of that combo, not of the combo. It's not really a combo. Off of the block with the uh, the, the uh, center, pick up Lawson. Oh shit! It's too late. He already threw a rip, and he got right to Big Ben. Sack. Hell of a play, watching full speed. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Fifty nine. 
Okay, what do we got here? Sets angles. Right defensive end, five tech or seven tech. All right, now we're seeing some some more work with the feet here, inside out. More of an outside angle, inside angle. A little bit of hes hesitation. Looks like you got like a double double chop swipe action, whatever you want to call it. I'm not gonna watch it a thousand times to go from a chop to a swipe. Chops the outside arm, which he's again a little bit inaccurate with. He hits the shoulder pad right there. You can see, so it's not super effective, but I like the outside in hesitation outside. And then again, he's quick to uh, to corner as a big guy. He doesn't he doesn't need a lot. He doesn't need to get a lot of depth to to really turn his turn his body turns it but again big bang gets rid of the ball quickly and uh he's there though play 60 we got about 13 left uh right defensive end left side of your screen <laughs> again He's blowing up this play. Like he, he's coming off of force these last couple of plays. Like this is a really good burst again. Like he he knows he wants to go through this guy. He's not going to try to play any any finesse game right here. One two steps up the arc, turns in, in step of the of the right foot. The third the third step. Again, look at the leverage game. He's winning that. Left hand inside to the chest, to right hand controlling the wrist, the hand right there. Blows up the tackle. The tackle is going on a ride. Disengages, finds Ben, chases him down, and uh, Ben gets rid of the ball. Um, but uh, that's that's how we'll play for Lawson again, full speed. That tackle had no chance, <laughs> absolutely no chance. Sixty-one. I don't know what it is, but let's watch. Uh, right defensive end, right side of your screen. He's had been a ton of times this game. Good burst, similar to what we've seen before. This is not as more as much of a hop as uh, the last couple times, but still a little bit more of an aggressive angle. Starts to widen and kind of dip his shoulder right there to lessen that contact window, but also he th he's throwing the rip. Chop, rip. Good timing. Like, he, he's, he has good anticipation of, of when the, the punches are coming from the tackles. And he's doing that right there to, to, to widen. Um, to, again, both to lessen the force of the punch from the tackle and to corner. Once you start to widen, you're allowing your, yourself to turn, turn that corner. Um, if you're straight, you obviously have to sort of turn, but when he's widening like that, he's allowing himself to, to turn. He's, start, he's starting to turn to corner as he comes into contact. Not go straight, hit, then corner. So he's already preparing that corner. Chop, rip, high and tight. Move that elbow, hit on Ben. He gets the ball out quick. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, C set power. I, I forgot. I don't know what this is either. Uh, right here, seven tech, right defensive end. Again, affecting a play. Another situation where the uh, the tackle doesn't have the best footwork. He doesn't have the, the foot speed to get out on a loss, and and he just completely opens up. And this is a part of also the fact. Well, it's still not good from the tackle, but. The line is is sliding to the to the left um, in their gap protection, so he knows he has help inside, um, or he should have some help inside. Even though you have a you have a three tech here as well, so you shouldn't really expect that as a tackle, just being aware of the situation. But the tackle immediately before he even gets his first step out is completely open to his hips. Obviously, Lawson's not stupid; he notices this. When when the obviously it's hard to get to the edge right here. Much easier for you to get inside here. Um, when a tackle's hips are opposite of that gap. Tacks the B gap, swipes the hand, rip. Guard tries to drop off to help uh, to help him. 
thirty two late. He's nice and low. Look how low he is compared to, the, to both linemen, which his height is a nat is, a, is a, naturally helps his leverage. But he also plays a good pad level regardless. So when he throws that rip, he drops his hips. Takes him both for ride penetrates. Ben can't step into his throw. Gets the ball out. He throw out of bounds. Yep. Oh, hold on. He threw that right to the corner and he dropped it. Oh, man. I didn't know Jamal Adams played for the Bengals. I thought he played for the Seahawks. Shit. All right. Next. 63. I think we've got 11 left. Uh, Power leverage. Consistent. In his game, seven tech. Oh, dude, this te- this tackle is getting absolutely shit on. This is seventy eight Villanueva. No, hold on. Let's see. I'm 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 googling it. Do I care about pausing the, the podcast? YouTube show now. Uh, Steelers number seventy eight. See, this comes up on Google. Villanueva. Yeah, he's a relatively good tackle. Uh, I think he's a little bit older now. I don't know if his play has dropped off, but he's getting destroyed this game versus Lawson. Got Bill and the, Bill and the way we got destroyed, destroyed Jason Peters. He's doing some work against some good tackles. Again, seven tech. Um, at this point, with this much room between the quarterback, Lawson just feels like he can bull rush right to him. That's what's going to happen. He plays nine tech, seven tech. Uh, if those guys sit on him, um, he just, he's just going to bull. Less time. Not going to screw around. Gets into the contact window, reaches for contact, nice and linear. As you can see, wins the leverage game. Hands land inside. Again, nice tight elbows are much stronger. Again, and the tackle, again, literally gets airborne right here. You look at the feet, but he gets, you could tell he's airborne. At this point, his feet are not on the ground. Throws him completely aside and again, watching full speed. This is just power, power and leverage. <laughs> look at the, look at the mayhem in the back. Like, just, just imagine being the tackle like, at this point. And then he's on the ground. <laughs> Lawson like suplexed him. It that's that's fun. He gets the ball out though again in like three freaking seconds, but or less. But uh, that's awesome. Lawson effort. Okay, again, it's it's important to see effort. Obviously, you don't want a Muhammad Wilkerson situation. Guy gets paid and it's not going to play. But uh, he's not that guy. You can tell already. More of a tight angle, and he doesn't decide to do that. His his. His primary, uh, he's already figured out that he could bull this guy, um, obviously. So he's not even going to screw around with with his with his stab and chop. He just he's going to lean right into him, lean into him, win leverage game, good strike timing, tight elbows, under the pads, extends him, throws him up the arc, crosses his face, but good job while crossing his face. Like some guys, when they're crossing the face of a tackle they might take this arm off a little bit too soon, the inside arm, and then let the tackle kind of readjust and get his hands back on to, to kind of push him past the, the quarterback. But he does a good job maintaining the contact with his hand, the inside hand right here. Crosses the face, right hand now, replaces the left hand, and this is just going to kind of uh, press that shoulder so he can't extend that arm to get him inside. You know, Big Ben moves a little bit, and the and the tackle recovers a tiny bit. Good job of the tackle, for sure. But obviously now Lawson is feeling this. He's completely leaning, and and Big Ben is right in front of him. So what is he going to do? He's going to throw him by him, most likely right here. Throw him right by him, toss the tackle, and almost get to the quarterback. Oh, he gets the hit. Completion? Nope. Um, timing of cornering. Okay, so you know the thing where he probably widens a little bit as he kind of leans. I'm gonna assume. Uh, right side of your screen, right defensive end. Again, it's similar to a couple of plays ago. Rushes up to the arc, comes into that contact window, and just based on how deep he is, he's gonna corner. Obviously, you don't want to corner too soon. 
Um, but when you feel like, you know, that you're, you're that two, three ish kind of yards away from the quarterback, uh, quarterback's drop point, you're going to corner. Or it's going to come to more when you come into the contact window, comes to the contact window, because again, it does two things. Again, it, you're, you're kind of working underneath the, the arm. Um, you're lessening his, his force unless he really times the punch. Well, if he's going to reach a little bit, it helps you out. Um, and it lets you get more prepared for that rip. You're really throwing that rip hard in there when you lean like that. You see right there. Really scoops that rip in. Scoops it in. High and tight. To flex the force of that inside hand of the of the tackle. Right to Ben. Hits him again. How many quarterback hits does he have this game? Okay. Lost in long arm. Play 66, sub 73. Right defensive end, right side of your screen. Seven tech. Similar scenario where, uh, again, the wider he is, the more uh, perplexed he is to bull rush. Tackle sits on him a little bit. He sees the open chest, leans for it. Left hand lands, wins the leverage game. Bull rushes. That's all he's doing. There's really nothing more to that. He sees the hips open and just takes it right here. Hips open, take it. Take it. Extension, power, right to Watson. Which, by the way, it looks like that that whole dream scenario for the Jets is over. Unless they figure out some legal things, unless the the Jets investigate, they're fine. A lot of it is bull crap, and they're going to take the risk and trade them for lesser. I I, I don't know. Um, I doubt it. I, I just think it's going to be Zach Wilson at this point. But bull rush, the one hand, the long arm, if you want to call it that, plants Watson on his back. I can make a joke about that, but I'm not going to. Uh, plays angles. Right defensive end. Right side of your screen. Again, pretty similar. First two or three steps are usually towards the tackle when he's a, when he's a five tech. A little bit of a loose five right here. So a five tech. Left hand on. Jump into the chop. His definitely his primary move right here. Make the tackle lean, chop, rip. And yeah, you'd see exactly what that rip is doing right here. Boom. See how it lifts that arm? Now, obviously, it's much stronger here for the left, that left arm of the tackle on the, on the chest of Lawson is stronger here. Well, one look how, look how condensed Lawson is, but see what the, the rip does? Lifts up that elbow. Now the force is going upwards, not to Lawson. So now you can work through it easier. Works through it, corners, gets the hit on, on Watson, who uh, overthrows what looked like Fuller's body type. Not 100% sure. Could be him or like uh, is Kiki Kuti or whatever his name is on the team still. It could have been either one of those guys. Probably Fuller. Um, field block, Benz? Ben? Maybe it was Benz. Bend. Okay. Um, right side of your screen. Again, more of like a jump set or like an aggressive 45 degree set from the tackle. Obviously notices that he, he feels the aggression right there. So what does he do? Widen, get away from that punch, lessen the power of the hands, make him lean, cross chop, cross chop as he widens. Look at that really elongated step left to right, which again, gets you away from the punch and allows you to, to kind of get past the hips and corner. Chop club. Look at that. Like, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like the flexibility and the ability to flatten really quick for his size. That's right here. One, two, elongate. Boom. Look at that drop. Look how wide he is, and look how low he is. That's that's good for his size. That is really good for his size. Is he elite? His bend? No. Is it very very good? Yes. He's a, yeah, he's a physical freak, that's for sure. So, 
chop club, bend, flatten. Again, with interior pressure, does he step up and do a sacker here on the Jets? Most likely with their defensive front they have. Or can he not step up and he gets his loss and gets a sack? Yes, as long as it's a sack and Lawson was a part of it, either way, it's just as, as effective. Obviously, he wants the sack, but if he's making him step up right into, sh- into Rankins, then uh, it's also good. Um, Lamar Jackson, stand up in a two point stance right here, right side of your screen, right defensive end, or right outside linebacker, more of a, just a stand up end. Jump set. Just sound the play action. Lawson feels that, and he and if, and if he if he's reading the running back here as well, he, what he's probably thinking again, I can't get into his mind. But with him widening like this in the running back's track, um, if Lawson's quick enough and jumps in that B gap, he can get to the running back. So either way, it works. Sees the jump set. You see the work of the left hand. Watches left hand on the right hand of the tackle. Good hand accuracy. Defeats the hands. Works lateral to get to the B gap, throws the 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 rip the uh, the chicken wing just to, to uh, protect his chest. Club arm over on the on the uh, on the running back. Mar Jackson moves, spin move, chase him down. Effort. I think it's just a, a tackle for a short gain, right? At whatever yard line this is. 42, I think. Okay, yeah, so for like a two, like a one yard gain. So I like the effort right there. I like the technique too. Four plays left. Loss and power. Stand up right here on the edge. Okay. Again, the the the, uh, the center through the uh, guard or or uh, slot or sliding that gap protection. The uh, he sees the tag the tackle get wide. He's not going to win that edge. Lands the hands inside, sinks the hips. Hands inside, sink the hips, and then power right there. You see that the the instep of the right foot right there. Hands inside, power. He's winning the leverage game by a lot right there. By a very, very much. By very, very much. By a lot. Um, again, starts to lift the tackle, sees the track inside to the to the uh, to the quarterback. Power right there to work through that hit. You get to Lamar Jackson for the hit, but uh the ball's is already out. Leverage power for the third to last play of this loss review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. For the subscriber, if you watched it, the whole thing, I appreciate you. Uh, left side of your screen, right defensive end, stand up end. Again, it's just a play action with a sifter with uh, that the uh, the fullback right there. Sees that it's on a run. More guys can keep the ball. Good timing, widens, hands inside. Listen, when he's you're you're going against a fullback, and he's already lower than you, and his hands inside. This fullback has no chance, absolutely no chance right here. Bull, bulls him up the arch. He uses power to kind of throw him by him, flatten, get to Lamar Jackson for the hit. Ball is tipped at the line, playing full speed again. Just just quick awareness of of what's going on. Um, and and kind of you know stacking this fullback to get on the rush. And just power to storm right by him. There's, he's not going to win that. The, the fullback's not going to win. Not when he gets his hands inside. Um, I, I have seen him lose against a fullback or a tight end in the run game, and that more comes from him just being a little bit too conservative. I want to see him again be a little bit more powerful and forceful um, when he's setting that edge. Uh, power effort. Right defensive end, left side of your screen. Four point stance, good burst. This is Orlando Brown. Who is he on the team yet? I don't know. I can't think of top of my head. Orlando Brown wants to be that left tackle, not versus Lawson though. That's what he said in his press conference. I want to be left tackle as long as I play Lawson. That's I remember him saying it. Um, 
again, realize that that's in the heart. It'd be hard to win the edge right here. And just is going to direct his force right through Brown. Hands inside. Helmet into the chin. And just works the bull. Now, again, did he get the sack right here? No. Did this affect the play? Yes. What if he was throwing the ball right here to the tight end? It could have been. You don't, you don't, obviously, we don't 100% know, but he looked like he was. Feels that pressure. Now he doesn't. And he has to get, he has to get rid of the ball somewhere else, or does he, what does he do with it? Oh, he scrambles. Okay. But did loss and affect this play? Yes. Again, just good awareness of the set of the tackle, power to work through him, um, and clearly disrupt the play. And let's see the effort after. Yeah, the effort's always good. I, I, I love the effort. Um, last play, the review. Oh, that's what I'm going to bring up, too. Um, if you're still – I'll put this on the screen. Uh, drop reviews, too, if you could. Obviously, it takes a lot of work. The more people get out to, the more it helps the website. The more the website gets helped, the more I get help personally, um, and the show gets helped. But we did get a review from uh, like, like a couple of weeks ago, so I appreciate it bringing it up last show. Uh, Scotty Shonoff, uh, he asked why I'm not employed by the Jets. Uh, breakdown of players is unmatched. Plus, he will give you the truth about a player, even though you may not want to hear it. Hire this guy, JD. Keep up the great work, dude. Uh, I appreciate that one. And two, I think that's the main reason uh, that one of the main reasons people like the show is uh, I'm not going to bullshit about players. There's still guys who are like, oh, bless Austin can be the starter. Don't worry about it. I remember last, it was more, it was more, more or less last year. It wasn't this year people were saying that bless Austin can be a starter, but I remember. People like after a couple of good games last year, even though we got bench versus Steelers, um, everybody's, oh my God, Bloodsaw's going to be a starter. Don't worry about that. And I'm, I was telling everybody, no, no, do not believe that. Dude, just do, don't. Guys like uh, who I think are overhyped by fans, like Marcus May, I think he's good, but, um, you know, the the George fans of the world that whole people want to be concerned about, that's that's why the film matters. Maybe I think Draw Davis or Jared Davis, depending on the role he fills. Uh, again, if he's going to be a guy who's going to set the edge, be asked to penetrate gaps and blitz. Um, that's what I think he should be used for. If they're asking him to, to fill Tampa two roles and be like a, like a primary hook curl guy, um, uh, you know, when I cover threes, I won't like it as much depending on how they, they coach him up on that stuff. But um, overall, that might be another guy because it's, it's similar to signing last year. A couple, couple million more than people thought he's going to get. Who the hell is he first signing a free agency? And he might be good. Uh, left side of your screen, right defensive end. Um, Again, really, just another close play. Widens as a, as a, as a tackle jump sets him. Good strike timing, but good strike timing by the tackle, who's obviously a, a, a big dude with length on him. So Lawson uh, definitely had a disadvantage of guys who have length. So his, I'm not, I did not look up his arms. But, uh, and again, I've watched enough to tell he has shorter arms. I'm not going to say they're or we're 32. 31 and three fourths, 31 and, and a half is what I would guess. 30, 31 and three fourths, I'll go with. Am I right? I don't know. People who will Google and be like, oh, you're an idiot. He's 32 and a half. I, I, maybe he does, but I doubt it. Um, that's another thing I'm going to Google. I'm really pulling the end of the show. Carl Lawson, arm length. 32 and a half. Nice. Not nice, but that's what I guessed. I said I, I, I gave him another quarter of an inch maybe. But, um, again, widens as a tackle widens. You, you don't want to run right into him unless he's going to bull him. But you don't want to – like, unless the quarterback is closer to you, you don't want to necessarily bull on a 45-degree set because it's, you have to work a lot to get to that quarterback. And you're not probably not going to be able to, especially against versus a bigger guy. So, um, widens. The tackle actually lands both of his hands inside. Um, but because Carl Lawson, as that punch comes, he, he widens, um, he still is able to work past those hands. Those, those hands do land, but they kind of almost propel him more, um, to the edge and then he's going to bend, throw the rip again, look at the, the power through the contact and like the, the flexibility he has, like, this is not an easy position to recover from, but he's able to stay on his track, but Again, Jackson, if he if he had more pressure from the inside, just look at this yard line right here. So let's just say he's even up a yard from that hitch. Does Lawson get there? Get the sack? Yes. But he steps up because there's no interior pressure. And now he scrambles. So as you can see, there's plenty of plays where Lawson was a pretty damn effective rusher, just didn't get the sack. 
Um, appreciate appreciate everybody for watching. Again, uh, today is Thursday. That this will be up. Uh, hopefully, um, I will be back in three, four, five days. Uh, Marcus Coleman and me will be looking at some. Marcus Coleman and I uh, will be looking at some uh, Corey Davis film. Um, I'll have about 50 plays. Maybe I'll do about 25, 30 with Marcus, and I'll wrap up the other half by myself. Maybe in a different show. Maybe on the same show. After that, we'll do Davis. We'll do Rankins. Um, maybe Cole Joiner, depending. You know, maybe the Jets sign freaking, you know, uh, a corner. I think it's really important to do a show on. We'll see. Uh, stay patient. I like JD's approach so far. Don't go crazy again. He's like 30 million dollars or a little bit less now in, in cap space. About 10 to 15 of that's going to be used to sign rookies and for in-season costs. So we really have about 15-ish million dollars. So if they sign a five million dollar corner, a five million dollar linebacker, and a and a five million dollar slot corner, that's all they really have right now. So the fact that they didn't blow their load on a guy like Kenny Galladay, um, that's the reason why. Like you, we still have dead cap from Train Johnson. Like we we have a lot of of warts in this roster and holes because of guys like McCagden and and Isaac in the last ten years. So be a little patient. Uh, appreciate everybody for listening, and uh, I will see you again in a couple of days.